Hi, I'm Griffin Johnson, the Armchair Historian. Today's video, North Africa, 1942. This video is brought to you by War Thunder. More on that later. By the end of 1941, the Allies had rapidly pushed Axis forces west along the North African coast, hoping to finally capture the elusive Erwin Rommel at Bay de Fam. Instead, he once again escaped and dug in at El Agela, where the Brits presumed he would assume a defensive posture. General Claude Auchinleck believed that Rommel's forces were too depleted by the events of the previous year to launch a meaningful counterattack. He and his staff had badly miscalculated. On January 21st, 1942, the Germans launched a punishing counterattack that pushed the British Eighth Army out of almost all of the territory that they had recaptured as part of Operation Crusader. During the first weeks of February, Axis forces swept east through Cyrenaica, while the British retreated again and again. On February 6th, the front lines finally stabilized some 60 kilometers west of Tobruk, as Rommel was once again hamstrung by his need for reinforcements. The Eighth Army, under the command of Lieutenant General Neil Ritchie, who my artist just still hasn't had enough time to draw, formed a defensive line from the Gazala Inlet in the north to Bur Hakim. The AUK, under strong pressure from Prime Minister Winston Churchill, ordered Ritchie to attack. However, our favorite stick figure was worried that the Axis forces would again sweep south of any new incursion. As a compromise, the plan for the upcoming Operation Buckshot called for reserve units to be positioned to the center and south behind a leading force. Before it could even begin, however, Ritchie was proven right. On the evening of May 26th, the Africa Corps' 21st Panzer, 15th Panzer, and 90th Light Infantry Divisions swung south while four Italian divisions remained to oppose the Gazala Line. The attacking force annihilated Ritchie's reserve units, but in a turn of events that should surprise absolutely nobody who's been watching this series, insufficient fuel and ammunition once again stifled Rommel's attack. Unable to finish their march to the sea, the now isolated Axis divisions took a defensive position at a location they called the Cauldron on May 29th. During the first week of June, the Allies launched air and ground assaults against the Cauldron. For a moment, it seemed like Rommel might be encircled, but on June 1st, his panzers managed to break through to their west and reunite with the remaining Italians. Watching the Gazala line crumble, Ritchie ordered the 13th and 30th Corps to retreat to Egypt, leaving only the 19,000-man 2nd South African Division at Tobruk. Once again, the Allies fled east, and once again, the port city was in the crosshairs of the Desert Fox. In order to capture that vital port, which had so long eluded him, Rommel knew he would need a formidable supply of both fuel and ammunition. His hungry gaze fell upon the Allied airfield at Kambut, where the RAF had been dropping supplies for British ground forces. That proverbial hen house stored all of the eggs he could ever want. Bolstered by what he had taken at the RAF supply drop, Rommel attacked the city once again on the evening of the 20th. This time, rather than nine months, the siege lasted barely a day. It was the worst British military defeat since the fall of Singapore, and was seen as especially humiliating due to the speed with which it was obtained. In recognition of his foresight before the Battle of Gazala, we at the Armchair Historian team have finally commissioned a portrait of Neil Ritchie. And in recognition of his defeat, the Auk fired him. Maybe we shouldn't have invested in his portrait after all. The Auk took direct control of the 8th Army on the 25th, but couldn't stop the Africa Corps from sweeping aside the defenders at Mersa Matra. With the resupply depot at Tobruk finally in hand, it seemed that Axis forces were on the cusp of victory, and for his victory at Tobruk, Rommel was promoted to field marshal. Cairo, the center of power in the region since the day of the Romans, was barely 200 miles away. The Suez Canal, the all-important jugular vein of the British Empire, was within striking distance. All that remained in the way was a little railroad station by the sea called El Alamein, and the battered British army defending it. The new field marshal saw no reason to let this impediment stand. Possibly riding the high of his incredible successes, Rommel either overestimated the resilience of his own forces or underestimated that of the defenders. 
his exhausted men were moving towards the end of their newly extended supply lines. Moreover, finally learning from the Germans' use of the 88mm anti-aircraft cannon to punch through tanks at long range, the British defenders mustered a massive artillery barrage from every gun available. Rommel's tanks were especially vulnerable to this bombardment because they had been channeled into a narrow corridor between the sea and the Katara Depression, an area of desert with especially difficult terrain that made it impassable for mechanized forces. Fighting was intense, but ultimately the Allied position held at the cost of more than 13,000 lives. The 9th Australian Division counterattacked following the artillery bombardment and pushed the Germans back, securing the AUK his last victory in the desert campaign. But the Prime Minister had become impatient with the AUK's suggested timetable for offensive operations, which were set to begin in early September. This was likely due in part to Churchill's knowledge that a new front was about to open up in West Africa. Without a swift victory in Egypt and Libya, the planned invasion might face disaster. During a handful of meetings in London that July, plans for Operation Torch, a massive Anglo-American landing in Northwest Africa, had been finalized. Fearing that any hesitation might jeopardize the plan, the Prime Minister sacked the dawdling AUK as Commander-in-Chief for the Middle East and Acting Commander of the 8th Army. Taking his place as second in command in the Middle East was General Harold Alexander, who had commanded the 1st Corps at Dunkirk. For command of the 8th Army, Bernard L. Montgomery was chosen. There will be no more bellyaching and no more retreats. He intended to go on the attack, but ironically, the meticulous general spent even more time preparing than the AUK had requested. That left the ball in Rommel's court, but when he again tried to break through on the night of August 30th, this time at Alam El Halfa Ridge, the Africa Corps was met with heavy minefields and air attacks. On September 2nd, with fuel yet again being the limited factor, Axis forces retreated once more. The field marshal's seemingly unstoppable advance had well and truly stumbled. For the next seven weeks, Montgomery gathered strength and reinforcements. When he launched a massive attack on October 23rd, he had 1,230 medium tanks ready to be deployed. Rommel was down to just 210. Of the Allied tanks, 500 were new American Sherman and Grant tanks, as good or better than anything the Axis had except the Panzer IV, of which Rommel had only 23. The offensive was costly, and the artillery fire tore tanks apart on both sides, but Montgomery was able to slowly wedge the 8th Army into the German-Italian position. Landmines that Rommel had planted to his rear and the anti-tank guns that now surrounded the British on three sides meant that the Desert Fox was killing four tanks for every one that he lost. Nonetheless, his enemy's numerical and logistical advantage was overwhelming. By the evening of November 2nd, the Africa Corps had just 30 tanks in operating condition. When the field marshal signaled a retreat, Adolf Hitler was furious. He told Rommel to hold his position at all costs, but the battle was lost, and the Fuhrer's anger wouldn't change that. The hurried withdrawal left the Allies in a favorable position. The Italian divisions had no motorized support and were practically abandoned when the Germans started driving back to Cyrenaica. Now a word from our sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is an online military vehicle combat game that is free to download on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. You can battle alongside millions of other players with a spectacular arsenal with more than 1,200 meticulously reproduced historically accurate tanks, aircraft, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s all the way up to the 1990s. There's over 80 major battlefields you can play on with great graphics, authentic sound effects, and beautiful music. Who wouldn't want to listen to Beethoven as you load into battle? If you use my link in the description down below, you can register and receive a free premium tank or aircraft and three days of premium account time. Start playing today and you can join the action in massive online battles, on land, in the air, or at sea. Still recovering from the grueling second battle of El Alamein, Montgomery did not move quickly enough to capture Rommel on his retreat, but it hardly mattered. American forces began landing from Casablanca to Algiers just four days later on November 8th as part of the long-awaited Operation Torch. They formed the second half of a massive pincer movement against the Axis remains on the continent, marking the beginning of the end of Rommel's campaigns in North Africa. 